morning to every friends and family. And thank you again for joining us online and at home. Happy November. It's hard to believe that November is here. And now we're enjoying uh, the cool, brisk air. Uh, October was awesome. It was a month of Thanksgiving. It was, again, a reminder that uh, there's still so much to be thankful for and so many blessings. And uh, again, it's such a, a wonderful privilege to worship with uh, each other. So even though we are disconnected physically, we can still stay connected. And I want to encourage you to, to do that, to stay connected with us. Uh, stay connected with us online. Stay connected with us uh, via email, phone, or whatever it might be. Uh, the most important thing in this season is to stay connected. And one of the things I, I want to encourage you, of course, is to stay connected to God. Stay connected to, to, to the Father. I, I want to encourage you to get into the Word of God each day. If you don't have a Bible reading plan that you are a part of, I would encourage you to, to connect with us, and uh, we'll get you working on soap. We'll get you into the Word of God. And again, this is, is one way to encourage you to stay connected with God. And as it says in John chapter 15, uh, you know, apart from God, apart from Him, we can't really do anything. And so anything of eternal value, which is almost everything we do in this life, requires that we stay connected to God, and we want to help you do that. Another way to stay connected is to stay connected to the community, right? Stay connected to each other. And every Wednesday, we have a, a time together. We call it Refuel, where you can just join us on Central. Uh, uh, worship where we just gather together to to encourage to pray and look at god's word together i'm excited for for our time uh, we, we will over the next couple of of months be looking at the book of colossians yes there is a book in the bible called colossians and it is a letter to the church in Colossae. the apostle paul wrote to the church there and essentially one of the main themes that comes out in that book is connection we want to stay connected, connected to God, connected to the community, connected to Christ. Uh, and so those are the themes that we, we will be looking at over the next couple of months. Just a couple of other announcements for you, and, uh, and then we'll jump right into prayer. Today, we have um, worship uh, led by John and Jen from California. California. So again, very cool that we can stay connected across the distance. It's not just a church locally, but it's also the church globally gathering together in worship. So thank you, John and Jen, for being a part of our worship service, for praying for Church in the Valley, and for again encouraging us um, even today. And this uh, after after they they lead us, uh, we have a very special guest speaker who will also be diving into Colossians. And so I encourage you to get your pen and your paper out and uh, take notes so that you can interact with us. And of course, leave us a comment. Um, we were praying for the Philippines the other day, and I believe that God answered our prayers, amen? Uh, we saw that, that 2020, it said that there was a super typhoon about to strike the Philippines uh, this morning in the Philippines, uh, so yesterday for us. But uh, um, this morning we found out that although there was damage and lives lost, uh, the damage was minimal, and it just grazed Manila, which, of course, is uh, the most populous city in the Philippines. And so praise God for uh, protecting and sustaining the people there. There's still a lot of damage and still a lot of work to be done. So let's continue to pray for them, church, and let's support them in whatever way we can. And I believe that we can do that even financially. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, if you need any uh, prayer you, or to connect with us, you can either connect with us by calling us at 780-884-2482. That's 884-2482. And to continually support the work of the ministry, you can give to Church in the Valley at CIV uh, finance at outlook.com. That's CIV finance at outlook.com. So let's go ahead and turn our attention uh, to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to read uh, a passage out of John, and um, I encourage you to stand up. Even if you're at home and it might sound or feel awkward, why don't we stand up in honor and reverence of God's word? And this is what it says in John chapter 16, verses 20 to 21. Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. It says, in, uh, furthermore, shall I bring to the point of pain and not cause to bring forth 
says the Lord. Shall I who caused to bring forth shut the womb? Let's pray. Lord, we live in an hour of, of shakings. COVID-19 still lingers. Our economies have been impacted. And many of our nations are rife with the pain of division and polarization. In some parts of our world, the winds of war are gusting. Your people are being persecuted and millions are on the verge of starvation. Yet in the middle of these shakings, we take our stand on the fact that we have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Heavenly Father, we are thankful your kingdom is unshakable. We come boldly before your throne asking for the faith of peace. We need to take our stand in the hour. We are, all, we are also thankful for your mitigation of COVID-19, and we cry out for its complete eradication. Awesome God, in the midst of these shakings, we believe divine contractions are also taking place. They are the birth pangs of revival and a great awakening. We choose to press forward mightily in prayer, bring a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon our lands. Lord, may the words of this prayer resound through the courts of heaven and shake the gates of hell. Send revival, send revival, send revival. Pour out your Holy Spirit worldwide and awaken your church. Let us see the conversion of millions of precious souls. Heavenly Father, we live in an hour with an impending sense of revival throughout your church around the world. You promised not to shut the womb at the moment of delivery. As Isaiah chapter 66 promises, today we claim the ancient promises. Help us persevere in prayer until the spiritual walls of resistance crumble and our world is shaken by revival. Lord, as your church stands unified in prayer, pour out your Holy Spirit on our planet. Fill us afresh with your divine love. Let us be a barricade against the polarization and division fracturing the cities and nations of our world. We pray this, Father, knowing that you love to hear our prayers and that you desire to use and utilize your church. And God, we do give you thanks for, again, granting grace upon the Philippines and upon that part of the world. God, we acknowledge and recognize that you are still powerful. You are still on your throne. and Nothing shakes you. Though our world may be shaken, God, nothing shakes you. And so we can depend and trust in you. So, Lord, give us the eyes to see. Give us the heart to believe. Father, may our feet continue to follow you forward in faith. Lord, I pray that even today as we worship you, your spirit would fall upon each home, each device, that there would be no distractions, and that, Lord Jesus, at the end of this worship, you would have been magnified, glorified, lifted high, and that we too, Father, would be encouraged. As, as we leave this place, we would be the messenger and the message of Jesus. We pray this all in your most powerful and precious name. And everyone says, amen yes. and amen. Hello, CIV Church. Happy Sunday morning and good, mor good morning to you all there. Um, we're glad that we can have this time together to, to come and worship uh, and, and praise of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I guess that's a w another good thing about um, uh, this pandemic, right? We can uh, still be able to come together and, and worship even though we're, we're miles and miles apart. Um, so wherever you are, however you are, and whoever you are, uh, we're just glad that you've come to join us this morning as we give praise, honor, and glory to the Lord of our life, Jesus Christ. Amen. Psalm 104 says, Let all that I am praise the Lord. O Lord my God, how great you are. You are robed with honor and majesty. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God to my last breath. May all my thoughts be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Amen. So church, please feel free to stand up and uh, sing praises to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who deserves all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor.
God and Son of Man. Glory and honor, praise, adoration, now and forevermore be Yours is the glory, yours is the honor, you are there. Amen. Well, church, I don't know if you can recall a time when you were a student, perhaps at school, um, in high school or elementary grade, when uh, someone would cause trouble in class, and then the teacher has no idea who it was, and you know, the teacher would ask, you know, who's done this or has done that, but no one speaks up, right? Um, and so the teacher decides, okay, if you're not going to speak up, whoever caused that trouble, everyone else is going to go to detention, right? It's almost unfair to think about it. I don't know, maybe it was um, someone that you know th that caused that trouble, or maybe yourself. <laughs> but uh, it, it's like that for, for us um, who have been separated uh, from God because of sin. Uh, it all started um, uh, when humanity fell uh, and caused trouble for everyone else. It does sound unfair, right? We, in a way... We had nothing to do with it, but um, we've been separated uh, from God uh, because of sin. And so just like the students who, who, who got in trouble and, and um, was sent to detention, we ourselves are just as guilty as the, you know, our, our the very first uh, humans uh, that came about and, and uh, committed the sin. We are just as guilty as them and we too deserve to be in that detention with them. But it's actually, we deserve more than a detention. We, d we deserve punishment um, because of sin, because of our disobedience. Uh, but praise be to God that it didn't end up that way um, for, for humanity, that God loved this world so much that he sent a rescue for us in the form of Jesus Christ. See, we were in trouble and deserved punishment uh, for disobedience. But Jesus Christ took that blame for us. He's the one that spoke up and said, take the blame, put the blame on me. I, I, I'm the one that will take that, that, that punishment for the sake of humanity. I mean, what can we do, after, you know, uh, how should we react in a time like that or, you know, for, for what he's done? I mean, doesn't that call for just humility and, and gratefulness and praise and adoration for, for all that he has done? Well, let's continue to praise God for, again, for sending Jesus to us, for us, so that we did not have to take that punishment, uh, but for us to react in a way that uh, will give glory and honor to the one who took that punishment for us. So let's praise, praise be to God, who is wonderful, merciful, gracious counselor. So church, let's continue giving praise to our Lord, Jesus Christ, who deserves, deserves it all. There's no other recognition that is worth bragging about than what Christ has done for us on the cross. Amen. There's really nothing else we can brag about but Jesus himself. So please continue to have this uh, um, uh, heart and, and uh, attitude of worship and continue to join us as we also continue to hunger for his word, hunger for his truth, uh, and to continue um, uh, to, to give him praise and glory 
uh, for he alone is the one that deserves it all. Him alone is worthy of all praise. Father, that's our prayer, that there's nothing in this world that we should long for, no material thing, no recognition, no sort of promotion or anything else that we really should desire for whatever this world offers is all but temporary, for what you offer, 
what you've given, freely given to us, is eternal. And that's to be something that we should strive for and hunger for, Lord God. That's for your word, your truth to prevail and live in us and through us. So, Lord, thank you that, again, we all collectively deserve the punishment, but yet you have given us rescue through Jesus. We praise you, Lord God, for what you have done. Lord, continue to speak to us through your words. Continue to transform us, Lord God, to the renewing of our minds. Lord, that we can become more and more like your son. So I ask your spirit continue to move in this time of worship. In Jesus' name, amen.
Praise the Lord. Thank you to my brother, John, and his wife, um, Jennifer, all the way from Vallejo, California. Isn't it wonderful that we can still be together, even though we're apart? And there, those that are watching from all over the country and some in the United States, some are actually in the Philippines, welcome to our worship service. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about something very interesting and uh, something that hopefully when we're done with this, we can have some next steps on how we face uh, daily, li daily life. Uh, Monday, tomorrow, we go back to work. Oh, I don't even want to think about it. But God is faithful, isn't he? Amen. Amen. So we're going to go straight uh, straight to it. Last week, we heard from Pastor Jay. Uh, he is, uh, for those of you don't know, who don't know, he's a brother of uh, Nate. So Ooh. our siblings, uh, we're all in this together. Our family, friends, uh, we are building the church of God wherever we are, uh, the assignment that has given us. So he introduced to us, or he shared with us from the book of Colossians. We're going to do that today. We're going to go... Uh, verse by verse, not the whole chapter, not the whole, <laughs> not the whole book, because we have to end at some point. But Pastor Nate will uh, continue on and then uh, see uh, how how the Lord will use this book in our church. Amen. CIV. All right. So we're going to read, and I believe you have the verses on your uh, screen. Colossians one verses one to two. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to God's holy people in Colossae, the faithful brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from our Father in heaven. What a greeting! How does it feel when you're greeted warmly and kindly? Your tendency is to be kind back. Isn't it nice? It's nice to be greeted early in the morning with this warm uh, greeting. You know, I used to receive letters, used to receive love letters from Nate. And the moment I open the envelope and start reading, I mean, the very first words just capture me. It says, dearest to my dearest Dindin. <laughs> you know, I mean, it just sets the mood for what that letter is going to be like. I knew from the greeting itself that he feels something special towards me. But how about if we're greeted like this? Where have you been? Why didn't you answer any of my calls? Why are you late? I told you to buy, you know, a buy <laughs> milk from the store. You haven't been home. You're late. Where were you? How does it feel? when we interrogate, when we show people contempt to be nagged at. Who likes to be nagged? No one in this household likes to be nagged. Um, Stephen does. Stephen does? Okay, I will nag Stephen later. <laughs> How do you feel when people come in hot? They don't even give you an opportunity. Um, they come in hot with negativity, perhaps just when you answer the phone or when you uh, wake up first thing in the morning and you're bombarded with negativity. You know, one of the best days of my life was on my wedding day, uh, graduation day, the birth of all my three children, uh, the day we moved into this house, paycheck days are wonderful days, uh, days that are problem-free are my favorite days, mm -hmm. when life is good. Yep. Isn't it easy to greet others and be in a good mood when life is great and things are going our way? Yep. Well, of course. But notice how Paul greets his fellow Christians in Colossae. I wonder, was Paul having the best day of his life? Maybe he was just in a good mood or he's in a uh, beach somewhere or a high-end resort having a vacation. Paul is not greeting them in such delight because his circumstance is perfect. In fact, it's the opposite. The Bible shows us that these verses in which he was greeting the people in Colossae, he wrote these while he was in house arrest or in prison, chained in prison. And yet he was always ready to share God's grace and be kind and be warm towards people irregardless of his circumstance. And he brought, uh, he, he penned this letter 
with such love towards these people and they've and they've never even met. Paul has never met them. They've never seen them face to face. And yet you can already see the tone of Paul's letter, just like the, those love letters that Nate used to write to me. You can already tell what this letter is going to be about. Love text now. Love text now. Yeah, I still like letters. Uh, like I mentioned, Paul has never met the people in this church. We see this in verse uh, one of chapter two. And I'm just going to read it quickly. I want you to know how much I have agonized for you and for the church at Laodicea and for many other believers who have never met me personally. So Paul is writing to, in a way, strangers, right? Um, and he's, he's showing his love already for them through writing this letter. Now, how, how, how have you been greeted by people around you? Are people nice to you generally or? No. Oh, dear. <laughs> or... The other question, um, the opposite of that is, how do you greet people in your life? In, in the letter that Paul continues to write, he is so impressed and blessed with this church. Colossians 1, 3, we, we know that he is blessed and impressed by this church because he says, we always thank God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ when we pray for you. How often did he say he was thankful for them? Always. Always. In verses 4 to 5, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people, the faith and love that spring from the hope stored up in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel. Matthew Henry, in his commentary, says, faith, hope, and love are the, are the three principal graces in the Christian life that proper um, matter for praying and thanksgiving, faith, hope, and love. You see, these are the descriptions that Paul was sharing towards this church. In these verses, we see that Paul sets the pace, okay? He's confirming, he's verifying what true Christian living should be. So let's describe the church in Colossae. The church in Colossae was a blessing from far away. Like I said, it's kind, they're, they're kind of like Facebook friends. They haven't really seen each other, but they've heard of each other. Um, they had a good reputation and a good testimony, and their faith was in Christ. Their faith was in Christ. That speaks volumes. And then this caught my attention. The church of Colossae, according to the description, they love all the saints. The key word is all, all the saints, all Christians. Now, question for you. Can we love all brothers and sisters, even if they are different from us? Perhaps they're in a different denomination. They have different styles. They do things differently than we do. Can we still say, you know, I, I, I could love them. Uh, they're my brothers and my sisters. With a polarized society, our society right now is divided. Divided from different beliefs, different ways of doing things. You know, with a polarized society, it seems easier to stand up for what we are against. We are known for what we are against than celebrate what we have in common. Mm. Brother, sister, I, I love the Lord as well. You may do different things differently, but I love you because you're my brother and your sister, and you are my sister. As the saints, the called out ones, the church, brothers and sisters in the Lord, um, we have placed style and personal preferences as our priority, which has caused division. We would rather make sure that our preference and our style comes first before our love for each other. But what does the Bible say, Church in the Valley? John 13, 35. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. They will know us, church, by our love, not by how cool we are or how good, how good looking we are, how awesome our music is, how wonderful our pastor is. No, the Bible says you, they better not know you for those things. They will know us and they will know that we are true Christians by our love. And you know what? According to Colossians first chapter, we can learn from the church in Colossae what it means to love all the saints. Paul gathers this information from a trusted source, a co-laborer in the ministry. In verse 7, it describes who's telling him 
about the church in Colossae. His name is Epaphras. Did I say that right? Um, he's another pastor, perhaps a church planter. And Paul describes him as a faithful minister of Christ. Mm. Now, pause a little bit. Do you remember who has shared with you the love of Christ? Mm. Who has work so hard even though you didn't want to listen uh, who has prayed for you for years and finally you saw the light and you realize wow my friend has really been trying to witness to me share the gospel to me and i've been ignoring her or him do you remember who that person is in your life or people have you even thought of saying thank you to them for investing in your life i have other questions here how do you think people describe our church to others when people talk about church in the valley, how do they describe us? Would people describe us as loving and strong faith in Christ? Are we a blessing to others? Let's make it a little bit more personal. I have teenagers and one preteen that are listening here <laughs> and a husband. <laughs> the personal question there is, how do people describe you to others? Another way to put it, one pastor asked this question in a message I heard, oh, I don't know, more than 10 years ago. He said, when I enter a room, am I celebrated or just tolerated? <laughs> when I enter the room, do people roll their eyes or go, oh, here she comes? Yeah. Or are they happy that you have entered the room because you are a blessing? Or when you call someone and they see your name on the caller ID, are they like, oh, goody? So and so is calling me, or oh, what do they what do they want now? Um, another question: Do you brag about other success? Other success means the success of others, or do you find yourself only talking about you? If we were to record a conversation that you're having, maybe a coffee time, or you're going out with your friends, and someone would were to record it, would they hear more about you, or would they see you more listening? and allowing others to talk about their success, and then you celebrating with them. You see, when we share the good things that our brothers and sisters are doing, or success of other churches or other ministries to other people, those people that you're telling the stories of other success will be compelled to pray. And that's exactly what happened. This is what Pastor Epaphras did. He shared what God was doing in Colossae, and it has encouraged others to pray. Are we sharing about what's happening in that church and in that ministry and celebrating because it's the kingdom of God and compelling others to pray for them? You see, church, our scope and our understanding of God's faithfulness becomes bigger when we pray for others, even though we haven't even met them in person. And I am so proud that our church prays for our tribal group, uh, ministries in, um, in Mindanao, and then churches in Cuba. Those are two sort of like concentrated prayers that we have been um, doing in our church time, prayer time. We haven't met them, not all of them, but we care for them enough that we would pray for them. Because one day you heard someone talk about ministries in Cuba. We had pictures and newsletters and um, Pastor Elubin and his wife came here and we heard about what's happening in Cuba. And what happens then is we are compelled to pray. We don't have to go to Cuba to pray for our brothers and sisters in Cuba. So what happens here, what happened here is Pastor Prefra said, did you know that this is, what's, this is what's happening in Colossae Church? And Paul and Timothy were captivated by that and started praying for them. Now, did you know, church, that there are people, brothers and sisters across the wor world that are praying for Church in the Valley? From the day we were born, <laughs> Not the day we were born. The church was born until today. And they have never met you. I have never met them. There are churches praying for us, supporting us financially, even though they have never met us. CIV, isn't it wonderful to know that someone out there, someone out there, a church or a group of people are praying for us? Oh, aren't we blessed? Did you know that First Baptist Church uh, in Norfolk, Virginia, has Ooh. been supporting us. Shout out to Pastor Eric and, and family there, uh, Church uh, First Baptist in Norfolk. Um, they have flown us there. Nathan and I have been there to see wonderful folks. Um, but, but they've never met us. 
the rest of our church. Mm -hmm. And yet, even through this crisis where they can easily pull their support because everyone is having a hard time, they choose to say, God, <laughs> we want to use um, whatever you've given us to share, to help um, the church here in Edmonton. Isn't that wonderful church that people love us, even though they have never met us? I'm going to show you a card. Um, and I place this on my desk every day I see it. And I'm going to read to you. Um, Thank you for the work you are doing for the Lord. I am praying for you. And there was nothing else. There was no name of the person, um, no return address. In it was um, some very generous gift given to our family. And we were able to enjoy that together when we went on our vacation. Maybe the, church, the kids don't know. <laughs> but the point is, someone is praying for our family and our ministry here. I've never met this person. And if you're watching today, you don't want to be known. Uh, you don't want us to know who you are, and that's totally fine. We wish we know you, so we can thank you personally. But I want to say thank you. That gift came at a right time. You're praying for us. Amen. You are uh, giving support to us. We thank you. Uh, so who are you praying for? Mm -hmm. Somewhere out there in the valleys of Baguio City, maybe, or the ocean side of uh, a good wood area. I don't know. You talk, our church family talk about the, the ministries all over the world. Stop, don't stop praying for them. Um, and so church, let's not forget there are people around us that are helping us, even though they've never met us. They have not stopped, Paul said. I have, we have not stopped praying for the church in Colossae. For us today, even in this crisis, there are people that are blessing us from far away. Now, how do we pray for others? Colossians 1.10 says, So that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. So we're going to just go through that. Paul and Timothy prayed, first of all, continuously. They didn't stop. And intentionally. This is how they prayed. That they may please Him in every way. That they would bear fruit in every good work that they would grow in the knowledge of God, that they would be strengthened by God's power, that they would have great endurance, patience, and joyful thankfulness. This week, how about you? If you're praying for others, how about we try praying for them this way? Pray for your family, for your children, for your spouse, for your coworkers this way. Lord, pray. please help them to Please you in every way. Please help my, help my children to, ha to grow in knowledge of God. So open your Bible in Colossians 1 and follow the, instruct the, the example of how to pray for others. Try it and see what the Lord does. So continue to pray. Be intentional when you pray. Don't stop. How, why do we do this? And this is our last um, point. Colossians 1, 13 to 14. That word for caught my attention. For what? For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Church, brothers and sisters, we have been redeemed and rescued. Amen. We have been redeemed and rescued. Isn't that great? Amen. We have been rescued. We used to be in the dark, mm -hmm. and now we are in the light. Mm -hmm. We used to be in the kingdom of the enemy, and we are in the kingdom of God. That's, right. That's why we do this for he has rescued us. That's why we're going to pray. That's why we're going to give. That's why we're going to bless. How is this possible? Is it because we're just so good people? No, through Christ. He redeemed us. He's the one who redeemed us and forgave us. And in him, we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. So church, as we look into the book of Colossians, we're going to learn that to be a part of a church means there's someone out there that cares for us, mm -hmm. that we need to be taught uh, biblical theology that's correct from the Bible. 
Um, here in this first chapter, we've only ta uh, talked about 1 to 14. Paul's writing about Jesus Christ being the center of it all. We're going to learn that Jesus is all that we've, we need. He is supreme and he is sufficient for us. He is our cornerstone. It begins and ends with Jesus. Jesus is our redeemer. Only he can offer forgiveness of our sins so that we may have a relationship with God. It's only through Jesus. So today, if you're having trouble being kind and warm to others, when you just even say hi, ask God to help you. If you have difficulty praying for others, follow the example of Paul and Timothy. Ask the Lord how to uh, ask the Lord to teach you how to pray. Follow the example in first uh, in uh, Colossians one. If it's impossible to be happy and celebrate the success of others, and instead you become jealous of their success, ask the Lord to change your heart and to forgive you because that's not of God, and to change your attitude and say, you know, I'm going to be happy for my brothers and sisters because this is the work of God. Mm -hmm. Ask him to empower you and give you the heart to love all the saints. Mm -hmm. We have all kinds. You know, our, my children, all three children are different mm -hmm. from each other, but I love them all the same. Mm -hmm. So in a family of God, everyone's going to be different. We're going to reflect the image of God in a different way mm -hmm. from, you know, this church and that church and that ministry and this ministry. But it doesn't mean we're against them. Mm -hmm. We can love even though we're different. We are to love all the saints, all the Christians that confess that Jesus is Lord. We are to love each other completely and unconditionally. There are three things I want to leave you with today. We are to thank and pray for others. We are to testify God's work in others and celebrate with them. And then Jesus is the Lord of the church. So today, ah. Uh, May we be blessed by this book. We're going to be using this as well in our Bible studies, in our small groups. Jesus is all that we need. We are to pray for one another and celebrate the success of others. Let's pray. God, thank you that your word is alive. You've written this. The Holy Spirit has written this thousands of years ago, and yet it still speaks truth to our lives today. Father, thank you for such a wonderful worship service we've had from across the land, from California to Edmonton and and across uh, Canada as well. We thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. Thank you for the truths of the Bible that can help us live a life that is focused on Jesus every day. Bless us, O oh, oh God. As people are blessing us, I pray that we would be a blessing to others, that we would be a channel of blessing to others. Mm -hmm. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good job.
your family and your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and your children and the children in his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going and your weeping and rejoicing he is with you he is for 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 you Amen. Thank you, church, for tuning in today and for joining us online and at home. So much to think about, so much to process. And even just that song, um, the blessing of the Lord be upon you. I pray that for you today, that today you would know that you are blessed, that you are highly favored uh, by God, and that no matter what you're going through or what you are experiencing, even right now in this moment, you are incredibly blessed. Thank you, Dindin. Wasn't that just an amazing message from God's word? Let's go ahead and thank her for that. And uh, we'll be hearing from her uh, more in the future. It's great that we have such a deep bench of, of, of wonderful, passionate preachers and speakers that we can pull from. Uh, God had placed a message on our heart, and that message was delivered to you today because God wanted you to hear that message and how we can be praying. And that really is essentially the first step in connecting with, with each other and with God is prayer. Uh, it's talking to God. It's simply uh, bearing our burdens to Him. It's joining our hearts together. There is power in prayer. So before we, we wrap things up, uh, if you have any prayer requests, if you have anything on your heart that you want us to be thinking about praying for you, uh, please send us a message, uh, DM us, shoot us an email, or even just text us. We want you to be prayed for. There is no reason for you to be going through whatever you're going through by yourself. So many things to be thinking of and praying for all around us, but God is more interested in you, believe it or not, right now. So let's go ahead and pray. Loving God and Heavenly Father, thank you so much for such a powerful worship where the church gathered together both locally and globally. Father, that's the beauty of this pandemic where it's allowed us to just, again, join hands all around the world and not just join hands in together, but join hands in worship and adoration of our good and loving God. God, thank you for John and Jen and the ministry that they have in California. Father, I pray that through this uh, ministry, you would continue to use them in a powerful way to lead people into the most holy of holies. God, thank you for Din Din and for the message that you uh, have placed upon our heart for us today. Lord, may it not just fall upon uh, our ears and then go out the other ear, but may it fall upon uh, receptive hearts, hearts that are willing and ready and desiring, God, to see you magnified, glorified, and this world changed. 
God, thank you so much for, for the men and the women that work behind the scenes to make this happen. Thank you, God, for Stephen. God, it's hard. Uh, it's, people think it's just easy to do these type of things, but God, it requires a lot of, of just moving, and, and, and I don't even know where to begin. But thank you for, for men and women that you've gifted, including Karis and those around us that have helped to make this happen. But more importantly, God, we thank you that we have an opportunity each day to be empowered through your Holy Spirit to live the life that you have died and you were rose again uh, that, and that you made for us. And I pray, God, that we would live that life with such joy and anticipation of what you're going to do next. So, Father, I pray blessings upon my brothers and sisters today. Thank you again in advance for all that you're going to do around the world. We do continue to pray for the Philippines and the surrounding areas affected by the typhoon, for friends and family there that are still uh, going through difficult times. We pray, God, also for um, just even the upcoming elections in the United States, knowing, Father, that this has been a very uh, tough, intense time for, for the nation as a whole. And so I pray, God, that your peace would descend upon them, Holy Spirit, that you would again just come upon the entire nation, and that, Father, you would grant peace, serenity, wisdom, and discernment to everyone there, and that people would join hands in unity and not uh, against each other. And again, Lord Jesus, we pray that you would calm the hearts of people, especially uh, with all that is still uncertain, all the things that are ahead of us that we don't know. May we continue to look to you, the author and perfecter of our faith. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and ask all these things. Amen. God bless you, and we'll see you again online and at home. God bless. Thank mm -hmm. you.